Friends, welcome to my hospital at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is fecal multiplication of a cataract with grade 2 plus nuclear sclerosis. In this video, I want to show the ABC of fecal multiplication, that is, divide and concur technique of fecal multiplication. This is a very safe technique for the beginners. The surgery is boring, the surgery is slow, but it is very safe technique you know your machine you develop your tricks in your foot through this technique in this case after the initial steps capsulorexis is being done now i incise the capsule with a 26 case band needle and then take a uterta forceps hold this capsular flap go anti-clockwise remain at a certain distance away from the margin of the people. I usually prefer a rexis towards the largest size, usually 5.5 mm to 6 mm and then complete the rexis. Over 3-4 months this rexis will contract and it will become little smaller. So it is better to do a rexis which is between 5.5 to 6 mm. And now this is another paracentesis on the left side of the main incision. Now hydro dissection, a very important step. Take ring lactate or PSS, go underneath the anti-capsular rim, go near the equator and then inject very gently a wave of fluid. You should see the fluid going towards the opposite equator as it reaches the opposite equator tap right over there at the opposite equator and see that the fluid comes along the equator anteriorly and then you can do some more hydro at some more points tap the nucleus and now try to rotate the nucleus while you are rotating keep injecting fluid so that the anterior chamber is formed In this case, it appears that there is the capsulocortical addition is sticky and it is not good rotation, but it is okay. And now we are going to introduce the tip of the FECO handpiece. Yes, in this case, I am going to show the ABC of FECO emulsification, the divide and concur technique. Go bevel down. You can aspirate some superficial cortical lens matter so that your visibility improves. Now turn the HECO handpiece with the help of your left hand. Make it bevel up and then again introduce the chopper. The chopper supports the anterior surface of the nucleus so that the nucleus doesn't tilt. Take care the eyeball should not turn towards the lower lid. The eyeball should not tilt. Keep it facing the microscope. And now start sculpting. In this time, at this time you don't need high vacuum. Just in this case the vacuum is only 50 millimeter of mercury. Flow rate is 25 and the power is according to hardness of the case. This is a small, this is a softer nucleus, nucleus chlorosis as I said is about grade 2 plus. So, FECO power used in this case is about 50%. And now two trenches are being made. This is the other side of the first trench. And as you can see that the, after the initial trench, I can see that the it is not right at the center. So one part of the nucleus is larger than the other part. In such cases we end up making three fragments. Here it is. This is the first crack. Go at the floor and then apply opposite forces. At this time also you can sculpt if it is needed and yes we have made three fragments. Now I find that this yes one more fragment and now this is the smaller part of the nucleus I could not 
I just tilted it and I, now I am going to FECO 2 mode asking the assistant to go to FECO 2 mode at this time vacuum is high it is 350 millimeter of mercury flow rate is 35 and power is same 50 percent and now And now always try to tilt the pieces and the inner edge is elevated and then attack the piece like this. Tilt it, go at the edge and apply energy. Softer cataracts are harder to manage this cataract is soft but you have to be a master in managing soft cataracts all the money comes from soft cataracts patients with hard cataracts are usually poor so be a master in managing soft cataracts and now cortical cleanup I use Simco cannula in most of the cases. Many of my colleagues ask me why. Because I don't see any difference between Simco and a coaxial IA. I use the Simco as a coaxial IA. So Simco is fine. I can manage with only one side port. But yes, bimanual looks elegant so let us use bimanual irrigation aspiration it is slower in my hands because I use it occasionally irrigation is through the right side put aspiration from the left and now there are some cells some lens fibers sticking to the posterior capsule still I am pulling the fibers from the equator and now I am using only the irrigation to dislodge the just by irrigating you can dislodge the cells from posterior capsule or uh, yes after irrigating we can go to IA2 and remove these loose cells. This is hydration loosens these fibers and then we can easily remove it. Sometimes we have to increase the vacuum which is usually 20 to 30 to up to 50 millimeter of mercury. And now this is hydro implantation. This is not for beginners. This is when you are uh, expert um, surgeon. Just keep the antechamber formed and implant the lens and the left hand instrument pushes the trailing haptic into the back so within five six seconds you can implant the lens into the capsular back and then since there is no visco you don't have to spend a lot of time for cleaning the visco this is a bit of moxifloxacin this is at this time and now I hydrate the side ports and then this is the final leverage so the moxifloxacin that I have injected most of it is washed out consider that I have not used moxifloxacin but it doesn't matter if you do a clean surgery moxifloxacin don't ha doesn't have to be implanted intracamerally after surgery, my assistant puts about 4-5 drops of moxifloxacin over the ocular surface and that is good enough. But this last lavage is very essential. There should be clean, clear anterior chamber at the end. This prevents post-operative inflammation like post-op EVITs, TAS, etc. are very minimal in my cases nowadays. This is formation of anterior chamber. Check the wounds and then conclude the case. Hope this video will teach you the ABCs of fecal emulsification. Be a great surgeon and serve the mankind with compassion and great skills.